my boobs are like bigger, but they're also just like firmer. It almost looks like I got a, like a boob job. I could not be more excited to go over all things first trimester with y'all. We're gonna go over symptoms, aversion, baby gender, <laughs> registry, and I'm just really, really excited. Before diving in, we're gonna hop into the shower. I'm gonna show you a little bit of an updated hair care routine. Now that I am pregnant, I have simplified my routine even further. So let's do that and then run through it all. <laughs> I've got my notes and I'm ready. I wanted to quickly go over a brand new product from Hair Story. It's called Pre-Wash and it is my newest obsession. A fun fact, they sent me a sample to test for a couple weeks and I really appreciate when brands do that because it allowed me to really put the product to the test and ensure that I genuinely love it. And I do, it is a new prebiotic micellar scalp rinse. I feel like most of us know and love micellar for our skin, but now it's being applied into hair care. The difference with this pre-wash in particular is that it also has a prebiotic, which has good bacteria that's gonna help the scalp and the microbiome to remain balanced while the micellar water is still working effectively and removing that build up dirt oil to get your bounce back. So I simply like to divide my hair into sections and work the product in, massage it all over. Here's me showing you the tiny little bottle that they sent me. <laughs> and then um, leave it on for like four minutes or so. You can continue to scrub. My hair looks a little crazy by the end of this and then rinse. So then when I jump in with new wash, my hair is already removed of any buildup and dirt and oil, but it is balanced properly and allows me to get that maximum definition back into my hair. And I did go in with a tiny bit more of new wash to really work and lather it in. I always use a little bit more of this product than I think I would. And after really scrubbing new wash in and working it all through your hair from the roots to the tips, you want to fully rinse it out. You don't want any leftover. And just to clarify, cause I don't want there to be any confusion. I filmed all of the content in the shower two days ago. So this is now third day hair that I have refreshed like an hour ago. It's still slightly damp. From my refresh, I didn't do a full soak, but I just did a little water all over and then diffused to kind of amp it up for third day hair. I mean, I would be happy with this as first day hair, let alone third day hair. So yeah, no. <laughs> but just in case anyone's like, oh my gosh, no, her makeup's different. Also, I got my nails done and someone's gonna be like, oh my gosh, her nails are different. <laughs> I just wanted to clear that up. Okay. I will have all the hair story products linked in the description box down below. I truly feel like my hair has never looked healthier. So it speaks for itself. Let's dive in. First and foremost, I said this in my pregnancy reveal video at the beginning, but I'm gonna do this for, I think all of my pregnancy videos. I just wanna say, if you're walking through infertility right now, if you've experienced multiple pregnancy losses, I just wanna say that from the bottom of my heart, I hope that this video can be encouraging to you, but I want you to know that whatever you're feeling, or maybe you just can't even watch this video and you need to click out because it reminds you of what you don't have or what you want. Like, I just want you to know that your feelings are valid. I see you, I understand you, I have been you. So um, you are not alone, I love you. Okay, I just grabbed a pen as if I was gonna take a note. But the first thing I wanna go over is just like a two second recap of our fertility journey thus far. We have certainly not had your naive, unadulterated joy pregnancy experiences. Um, so as a quick recap, Last July, I believe, I took my IUD out. Daniel and I decided that we were ready to begin our fertility journey and begin trying. I literally got pregnant our second month trying and it unfortunately ended in a ruptured ectopic pregnancy where I then lost my fallopian tube and had to have emergency surgery to save my life. Sounds dramatic, but it is true. Ectopic pregnancies occur in 1% of pregnancies. It's not common, it's a part of our story and we, Took a few months to let my body heal after the surgery, let our minds heal, all the things, and then we decided to try again. And within a couple of months, we were pregnant again in January of this year uh, with our second pregnancy, and it ended in a missed miscarriage. I know many of you have struggled with infertility, have had a pregnancy loss, or have had multiple pregnancy losses, all the things. After the second pregnancy loss, we had to wait a couple months before we were able to try again, and we did end up becoming pregnant. I'm not gonna share the exact month or timeline. I've decided to, at least at this stage, I don't quite wanna share like, oh, I'm 15 weeks, or I don't wanna share exactly where I'm at simply because I don't want the weight of 
of the internet's opinion on everything. Oh, you don't look like you're that weak. Maybe you should talk to your doctor. I'm not sure if you're really that far along. Oh, you look way bigger than that. I think maybe like, I, I just, I am seriously somewhere in the second trimester. So right away, the second that I found out I was pregnant, both the second and third time, I have to immediately call my gynecologist and set up an appointment to come in and do blood work a couple days apart back to back the best way i can describe this being a completely non-medical professional is to my understanding if your hcg is rising appropriately then it is typically an indicator that you are having a pregnancy in the right location and most likely it's not another ectopic pregnancy of course my biggest fear throughout everything has been having another ectopic pregnancy possibly rupturing and then losing both of my fallopian tubes and only being able to get pregnant in the future with medical intervention of like an IUI or IVF or something along those lines. Um, if you don't have fallopian tubes, you got a problem. So I immediately went in for blood work um, and everything checked out and looked great. I then went in to get an ultrasound at I believe four or five weeks pregnant. They weren't expecting to even see a fetal pole at that point. They were just hoping to see a gestational sac in my uterus. Beyond grateful that day, we were able to see a gestational sac. And it's so funny because it's like you're literally just looking at a sac of where the baby should be. It's too small to even see at that point, which I feel like typically people wouldn't be excited about. But for us, it's just like, okay, okay, one step closer, it's in the right place. Then the next ultrasound, like a week later, they would have us go every single week until uh, I believe until we confirmed a heartbeat. And then they went to two weeks and then we went to the typical every four weeks. All that to say, if it is your first pregnancy, it's, it's more so typical to my understanding that you would go in for your first ultrasound, first appointment closer to eight weeks. But because of my history of back-to-back -back losses um, and trying to figure out if I was having another ectopic pregnancy, my team felt it was best for me to come in immediately and consistently. So we have had many more ultrasound appointments than the typical person um, and, and that's okay. I'm very grateful for that. It's actually been helpful for my mind and my anxiety. And I do feel as though I just glossed over the fact that I found out I was pregnant so, so early. Um, it was like this with my last pregnancy as well. I knew that I was pregnant both times before missing my period, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> Biggest symptom right away both times for me was nausea. Not to the point yet of throwing up, we'll get into that in a little bit, but immediately felt nauseous just sick to my stomach at like three weeks, four days, like literally days before missing my period. I also felt like I had some pretty bad headaches, but those two things alone, both times I knew before taking the test, like I just remember thinking, okay, I need to take a test and I'm going to be shocked if I'm not pregnant. We picked up a friend, I'm not sure how long this will last. What I wanna say about finding out you're pregnant after a loss is that it's it's of course I mean I was excited I was crying like all the things but it's such a mixed emotion of fear excitement just truly such a roller coaster of emotions like I found myself constantly preparing for another loss not preparing mentally for a baby that's just an unfortunate part of pregnancy after loss it's such a blessing but it is such an emotional roller coaster because you just don't know how it's gonna end and you're just hoping it won't end like the last one. Which leads me into symptoms and feelings and, and all the things. So early on, I would say that I had about two panic attacks and I don't say panic attacks lightly. That's something that I've had very few times in my life and it's not something I just wanna say, like, oh, I had a panic attack. Like, no, I, I had two panic attacks early on just they were right before going to ultrasound appointments after we had heard the heartbeat. Um, we heard the heartbeat last time, right? So then at the next appointment when we went in, um, they then told us there was no longer a heartbeat. All right, we lost her. We lost her, folks. Um, so when we then had our following ultrasound appointment this time around, after the one where we saw, saw the heartbeat, we didn't hear it at that point, but we saw it. I just felt like, okay, it's gonna happen again. And I remember that night probably sleeping for literally like 30 minutes and just crying the whole night and just freaking out. Daniel was so kind and compassionate and helpful through all of the emotions. <laughs> he 
I had a lot of patience during that season. Another emotional symptom that I had just from having previous losses um, was every time I would go to the bathroom and I would wipe and I would check the toilet paper. And I did this until <laughs> last, last night. No, um, probably about 12 or 13 weeks every single time I would go to the bathroom. I would look, even in the middle of the night, I would turn the light on. Um, and I've spoken with friends who have had pregnancy loss and they've shared that they've done the same thing and that it's normal. So if that's something you have done, <laughs> you are not alone. Now, more so typical symptoms um, that I have experienced, of course, the T-Taws have gotten much larger, unfortunately, because I started off as a G and I'm terrified I'm gonna end up a Dolly Parton. Um, yes, my boobs are like bigger, but they're also just like firmer. It almost looks like I got a, like a, like a boob job. It almost looks like I got a boob job. Like they just, they're firmer and they're fuller. <laughs> like, I don't know. I haven't gotten any complaints, but <laughs> I don't know. It's just weird and concerning. If they stop at this point, I can handle it. My fear is as they keep going. That is my fear. Uh, the next symptom would definitely be fatigue. I would say it is just now improving. Like the last two weeks, it has really begun to improve. Um, but the first trimester especially, it was a whole other level. Like I'm not the type of person that takes naps and I still never took a nap, but I would just go upstairs and lay in bed and like scroll on Pinterest. My body was like, no, you're going to lay down. And I've very much so been trying to listen to my body. So I just started working out last week again. I did not work out once during the first trimester. That was not what I wanted for myself or saw for myself. I envisioned myself working out my entire pregnancy and thought it would be more like mind over matter. And I probably could have, but I don't think that that's what would have been best for me. I do feel like my body was telling me to rest and I'm grateful that I did that. Next is sweat. Honey, I've been sweating like a pig. I've been stinking. It's, it's been a lot, truly. Like I've been taking two showers a day and I'm not that type of girl. Um, I wake up, I take a shower, I go to bed, I take a shower because I am constantly sweating, constantly stinking to a level that is not normal. Next would be stuffy nose. And this is something I've never heard from friends, but I feel like it's just now maybe starting to go away. But throughout this entire pregnancy, I've been like, oh my gosh, am I sick today? Nope, just a constant like nasal thing going on. <laughs> Last but not least would be cravings and aversions. I would say I haven't had anything significant, but coffee has definitely been an aversion for me. I would say if I taste it, I don't dislike the taste. I just, I never desire it. Like I used to go to bed being excited to wake up and drink my coffee. And now in the morning I'll wake up and it's like, oh, coffee. I don't know, it's as if my body is telling me, nope, mm-mm. Not now. <laughs> to my understanding, you are allowed to have a certain milligram amount of coffee every day. That's what my OBGYN shared with me, but um, I've only had probably like <laughs> three coffees this entire pregnancy. It just, it hasn't sounded um, appealing to me. We're starting to shift. I think I had one coffee this week. So things are, you know, <laughs> things are happening. <laughs> Last but not least is going to the bathroom. I pee about every hour. It is my full-time job. Um, I wake up multiple times in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. I'm never not going to the bathroom. I feel like I have a sip of water and I go to the bathroom. Like I always heard of that as like a third trimester type of symptom. Nope. Honestly, like from the beginning, it's I it's all I do. It's my new hobby. Oh, and the real kicker is throwing up. <laughs> you can skip over this part if, you know, everyone, some people are sensitive to hearing about this and I'm certainly not gonna go into detail. Uh, the first trimester, there was, a, there, was a, there was a lot of nausea that eventually led to throwing up. Um, Daniel was a rock star throughout it. Every single time I would throw up, he would come and like, pull my hair back and pat my back and um, bring me ginger ale and was truly like a champion of the people. I feel like most people don't like throwing up and really hate it. To me, there's like nothing worse. 
Um, of course, I'm extremely grateful and I would do it all over again, but it was exhausting to be that tired and then constantly throwing up. It really was a challenge. There was one time, you know what? I'm questioning if this is TMI. Do we take it there? We're taking it there. There was one, <laughs> there was one time I got violently ill um, and I freaked out, but everything was fine. Um, I was sitting on the toilet having a lot of issues and then five seconds later I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna throw up, but I, I needed to be on the toilet. So I just, I'm, I'm on the toilet and then I'm just throwing up. I'm just leaning over throwing up. And it was, I mean, that bathroom was, <laughs> we cannot speak of what that bathroom looked like afterwards. I did luckily have my cousin in town and she's a nurse and so, she helped me clean up, she cleaned up after me, and it was a beautiful, beautiful thing. Shout out to Nurse Logan, we love you, we owe you our life. Which leads me to the decision to begin to take Zofran. And I would like to go ahead and say that if you have a harsh opinion on this medication, more power to you. I simply emotionally don't wanna hear it. Um, I have felt enough shame about taking it um and so i would just kindly ask that you not speak negatively about my choice to take this medication everyone is different everyone's OBGYN is different everyone's experience is different all the things um this is a judgment free place uh my OBGYN recommended that i not take zofran until after the first trimester i have a cousin who started taking it from the very get-go with all three of her pregnancies Every single one of them was perfectly fine. It's different for everyone. I decided, I think at like 14 weeks, I called the prescription in for Zofran. And I told myself, number one, that I wouldn't have to take it every day if I didn't want to. I could stop taking it whenever I wanted, all the things. But I wanted to have it in case there was a day where I just literally couldn't stop being sick. So I got the prescription and I have since taken it really just a handful of times. Um, it is a miracle drug. It does work and I'm very grateful for it. I'm very grateful to scientists for creating it. Um, but I have seen a lot of shaming online about it and I felt like really guilty for even ordering the prescription and then I wouldn't take it. And I have chosen to take it a handful of times on days when I felt that I really, really needed it. And it has been a miracle drug for me. But I respect anyone's decision who doesn't want to take it or wants to take it every day or whatever. I think that you have to do what's best for you between you and your OBGYN. Next, I wanna to speak to gender. And I wasn't gonna share in this video, but I think I'm going to. <laughs> so, surprise! Okay, uh, I literally wrote down, gender reveal tease. Have them guess what the gender is gonna be. Okay, let's still do that actually. Wait, that could be fun. Guess down below. <laughs> guess down below if you think I'm having a boy or if you think I'm having a girl. Let's take a look at our chart, some old wives tales based off like, the heartbeat, the Chinese calendar, all the things. Make your educated guess and then um, I will share. I did wanna say that we opted to do NIPT testing to figure out the gender as well as test for Down syndrome, trust me, 18, all the different things. Um, I will say that the night before, one of my sweet, sweet friends who brought over a cake for us to cut in our backyard um, to find out the gender together just in an intimate moment. I had a panic attack and I called Target crying and I was just like, do you sell fetal Dopplers? And this poor like high school boy answers. And he's like, what? And I'm like, it's to see if the baby's still alive. Like I... <laughs> I can laugh about it now, but in the moment it was not funny. I truly freaked out. And looking back, I knew that I was gonna find out the gender the next day and I didn't want to get excited, start picturing life with that baby if the baby had already passed and I didn't know it. And so I just let my mind run rampant and wild and went to the worst places possible. Fun fact, Target does not sell fetal dopplers in store. That is an online only purchase. Uh, but I did end up calling my OBGYN and the next morning very early. And she was 
so kind and compassionate and had me come in to do an ultrasound. The baby was perfectly fine and healthy and she was like, listen, you've been through hell and back. Like, it's okay, come on in. We want you to have a peace of mind. I didn't have a real rational reason. There wasn't like, oh, I'm feeling pain or there was no reason. I really just set myself into a spiral. But unfortunately that is the reality of pregnancy after loss. So once I went to that ultrasound, calmed my mind, saw the baby was okay. We then did a gender reveal. If you still haven't guessed, vote below. Okay, roll the clip. Do you want to make a guess? Boy. Okay, I think it's a girl, which is Are why you I... saying that just because of the opposite? No, me? that's why I wore pink. Okay, we have to close our eyes. I want us to find out at the same time. I'm kind of nervous. Okay. Okay, ready? You're closing? We go in and close. Okay, ready? Tell me when to okay. pull it out. <laughs> Lift up. You're holding mine. Why are you touching Oh, wait, I think I dropped it. Let me put some cake back in it. Don't look. Did you already know? No. You're messing up the cake. Just I do know. It. Okay, ready? One, two, three. <gasps> Boy. <laughs> wow, you sure did make a mess. Wait, I'm like so surprised. I'm so excited. I'm just in shock. Were you going to be in shock either way? I was like 100% confident. I'm so... <gasps> <laughs> it's the testosterone getting to you, that's for sure. Oh my gosh, we're having a boy. Yeah. Are you so excited? I am. Oh my gosh. Wow. I'm in shock. When I tell you that I have never in my life been in so much shock. Truly, it was the surprise of my life, which was honestly just so fun. Cause I feel like as an adult, I don't know, I just don't get surprised a lot. Like it was a genuine shock. Um, I would have bet $10,000 I was having a girl. And <laughs> we've got a baby boy and I'm just really, really, really excited. And we're so blessed and grateful. And I said this in the last video, but we don't care if they're purple. Like we just want a healthy, happy baby. So, um, so far so good. And I will definitely continue sharing whatever you guys want to see. Maybe next time we can talk about registries, books, baby showers, all the things second trimester. Um, I wanna share as much or as little as you want to see. We're so excited and we are so hopeful for this baby. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for watching and being excited with us and um give me any boy mom tips all right <laughs> until next time i'll see you soon bye guys